but stealing from the children. Our detectives, which are simply the very best in the business, then started backwards looking to see what else it was she did because we could tell from that particular investigation she was very well versed, she was very talented in fraud and deceit online. And here's what we found. We found when she was the principal of Kathleen Middle School, she was given a credit card for appropriate purchases. And while she was given these credit cards for appropriate purchases, she stole at least $23,000 worth of products. About, and let me take you back historically, about October 2015, we received a call from Kathleen Middle School. They said, hey, we need to report 14 iPads missing and one MacBook Pro. They didn't actually report them as stolen, but as missing, they said, we, we simply can't find them. Well, in October of 2016, one of them turned up in Michigan. In no November of 16, another of them turned up in the state of New York. In February of 17, one turned up in Colorado. And of course, we are doing our best to follow this back through Amazon, which is where it was advertised and sold, and we determined, aha, Ginger Collins is the ones that were, was selling these online. Further indications tell us that she had at least 82 other transactions that were illegal where she stole property and sold property from Kathleen Middle School and the children. Well, what's interesting about that is she would steal things like toner. There, there was at least 60 different counts where she, where she was illegally buying with her credit card toner and then reselling it online. She would also sell part of that 60 was her laptops, her iPad, books, basketballs, graduation certificates, to the tone of about five or six thousand dollars a month. Well, we went online while we were doing this investigation and we found a thumb drive that she had and it had these things. You know, too pretty to work. She also had, this is another one I like, who gives a flock, by the way we do, and then, you know, when we, we saw how talented she was, we thought, well, heck, she may be too pretty to work, but she's not too pretty to go to jail. So we made up our own to go with hers. And that's where she is. We have arrested her once again today because although she may be pretty, she's not too pretty to go to jail. She's stealing from the taxpayers. She's stealing from the children. And our intent is to hold her responsible. The state attorney's office is vigorously prosecuting her already and is eagerly awaiting these current charges that she's under arrest for today. The last time I saw her, she was laying down on a bench in our holding cell up in the Northwest District just can't hardly wait to come to the county jail. So, Ginger, you may be too pretty to work, but you're certainly not too pretty to go to jail. Any questions about that one before I get to the next one? She stole 23,000 at least from Kathleen Middle School. She stole over 105 from McKill Academies. And that was after she was off, she left Kathleen. That's after she left Kathleen. So did she step up her game and get better at this? Well, she had more experience. So as a result, she stole greater amounts of money. And she had a very elaborate system. What, what was interesting, though, even though she would steal product and then resell it, 
She also had a system going where she sold no pro stole no product at all. She just dummied up and sent bills to the school board for payment and took the cash payments as well. But she is a thief with a capital T. And we still are investigating her. And if there's anyone else that's been around her, check to see if you have all of your money and all of your assets because it's painfully obvious she will steal, she will steal, she will steal. When she resigned from the middle school, was she aware that you guys were investigating her? She was aware that she was going to be reported to us. They actually called her in and confronted her first at the middle school to determine is there a mistake here? They were trying to give her the benefit of the doubt and to confront her with what appeared obvious to them. She quit that day. Of course, that's when we got in the investigation and we arrested her originally. Then we went back and started doing a historical look and that's when we found the 23,000 that she stole from Kathleen Middle School. No, 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 no. She, we had no knowledge of the Kathleen Middle issue when she took the job with McKeel. What is that thing that says too pretty to work? Is it artwork that she this, had? This like, is, is artwork that she had on a thumb drive along with evidence. We were searching for and found evidence of her transactions, but she had this and other artwork, but we thought this was the most appropriate to show you today. McKeel caught on to it pretty quickly. She wasn't there very long, and she stole larger amounts. So fortunately, McKeel caught on to it quickly, and the way McKeel caught on to it was some of the staff assistants was looking at the bills and the transactions and went, this, this is out of line, this is not correct. So they were, they were on to it pretty quickly. If you look at Kathleen Middle School, she was keeping the levels low and certainly within the purview of what she was allowed to spend as a principal. So she never got the amount of theft high enough that it would trip the next level of review. Do you know what she bought with all that? Oh, she bought, she bought everything. She, she bought stuff that they won't even let me show you here today. Oh, I've got to remember, I've got to go back to, uh, the only one I remember was the one that they said, don't you dare say that in front of the television media. <laughs> but she would buy everything from clothes to trips. She, she cruised around the world. She took trips to California. She bought clothes. She, she, there was no end to the money sh that she would spend. And she would buy trinkets and dumb stuff too as well. I think she had a habit of shopping above her means. Now, keep in mind, at the time, she's making a hundred grand a year, give or take. But I think a little over a hundred grand with McKeel and was making a significant salary, almost a hundred, as a principal. She was driving a Mercedes, living in a $300,000 home. I got a news flash for her. Her jail cell won't be near as nice as her $300,000 home or her Mercedes, which by the way, she has apparently sold her house and is now living with her mother. And well, now she, she's not living with her mother right now. Right now she's living with us in a county lockup. Have you guys ever had any run-ins with her before all this? No, no, she, in fact, she's a quite talented instructor, teacher, administrator. I mean, you have to be really good to elevate up to be a principal of a school. So if you take away the fact that she's a thief and a crook and look at just her ability to teach and be a supervisor, she was pretty talented. And she was really talented with the way she was doing the stealing as well because she was keeping it below a certain level. She had set up dummy companies with fake, uh, um, fake check, checking system, checkbook systems, and credit card systems, and was washing the money, if you will. This lady's got a master's degree. 
she is anything but um, but but uneducated. I mean, she is she's pretty sharp in the sense in one sense, but in another sense, she never has figured out that crime doesn't pay. She had some short-term wins, and now she's going to pay a horrible price in the long run. When you say she was selling graduation certificates, does that mean there's people out there now that are pretending to have graduated? No, no. What, what this was, this was blank certificates like you would buy them for congratulations, you did this, or congratulations, you did that, or it's end of the year, and it's a graduation certificate of, you know, perfect attendance. It was kind of blank certificates that they would give out in the schools. So she was writing up that she was buying these things, and in reality she wasn't. She was just billing them, or she was buying them and reselling them. She's a career educator, so she was at other schools as she ascended in the ranks. Yes. Do you now go back and look at all those other schools, maybe well, a small amount? Yeah, that's, missing here, there, and everywhere? that's a very good question. We absolutely will go back and look at all of her transactions and our detectives are in the process of doing that. That's, that's how we caught up with her at Kathleen Middle School. So we'll, we will go backwards. But we could see that she became more talented as time went on. Do you know how many other schools in Polk County can talk about uh, Not off the, off the top of my head, but we can get that for you. But I can tell you this. The message is clear. You violate the law, you go to jail. It's pretty simple. It's not hard to do what's right. But once again, I want everybody to know you're never, ever, ever too pretty to go to jail. See, we even got pink handcuffs. I mean, it's just nice here, you know. What do you take away about her mindset when you guys, you know, you're looking for evidence and you come across too pretty to work? I mean, what does that tell you about her as a person? She, she absolutely was enjoying life. She was glitzy, you know, look at the other what, what, skirting the rules. I don't give a flock. She just, you know, she was just a free spirit. But now she's not a free spirit anymore. She's a jailbird. She's one of the jailbirds that don't have feathers. So at the end of the day, she was bold, she was brash, and she's in jail. Okay, we had a murder, a homicide last night. I'll give you an upset, uh, update on that. Here is the guy that we've arrested, Miguel Casame. Miguel is an illegal immigrant, and he came to this country and committed murder. The person that he murdered was Gregorio Calmanero. Gregorio was 60 years of age. They lived together. Gregorio is also an illegal immigrant. So they're living together. They were drinking last night and they became in, engaged in an argument. And as the argument went on, Miguel became very upset and he knocked Gregorio uh, Gregorio down, he kicked him in the ribs, and he really got the best of the fight. Well, Gregorio jumped up, according to Miguel, and went into the room and came back out with a machete. And when he allegedly came back out with a machete, then Miguel began to stab him in the face and the neck many, many times and subsequently killed him. He then dialed 911 and said, hey, I've just killed my roommate. And when deputies arrived, he was standing in the front yards with his hands in the air. They've lived together about three months. And it's important to, to note that despite his allegations of the guy had a machete, I was defending myself, the evidence at the scene painted a different picture to us. Our homicide detectives conferred with the state attorney's office and we arrested Miguel for second degree murder. We will also send information over to immigration 
uh, ICE to be specific to tell them that we've got an illegal person in custody who came to the United States and committed murder. Now, had he stayed in his own country, he wouldn't be a problem for us or the taxpayer, but he's here illegally, he's committed crime, and now we have to deal with it. He's also killed another person who was here illegally, who, if they'd have stayed in their home country, in their community, away from Miguel, would be alive and well today, but he chose to come here illegally and subsequently got himself murdered by a fellow who didn't mind killing him. Okay, any what question? Was, what was the argument over? The argument was over their sexual preferences. So they decided they'd just beat him up and kill him. So that's what he did. You said he murdered someone before? No, the, this, this is the only one that he's murdered that we know of so far. But we'll go back and investigate that. Next kin is, has not been notified because all the next of kin is in Mexico. And it will take weeks or months if we're able to notify next of kin at all. But I can tell you this. This is one more example of why the president's got this right. People who come to this country illegally and commit crime have got to go. It's costing us, the taxpayers of the United States, a lot of money. And this guy's going to cost us a whole lot of money because even if they wanted to deport him, he's going to end up doing a life sentence if he's convicted as charged for murder. And that's all on, on the taxpayer, the United States, and certainly the state of Florida in this case. But if he wasn't here, we wouldn't be paying for his criminal conduct. Any questions? Going once, going twice. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. If anything remarkably exciting or newsworthy occurs, we will see you before Monday. I absolutely can.